This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studios, it's the Ramsey Show. Where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, number one best-selling author, is my co-host today. He is the host of the Ken Coleman Show here on the Ramsey Networks, where he talks about career and talks about jobs and uh, how, how to get one of each. <laughs> and uh, hopefully one and the same wouldn't yeah. be a bad idea. Yeah. So if you want to talk about that and your life and your money, we're here to help. The phone number is 888-825-5225. That's 888-825-5225. Selena is with us in Dallas, Texas. Hi, Selena. How are you? Hi. Thanks for taking my call, Dave. Sure. What's up? So my question is for Ken. Um, I kind of need help deciphering where exactly I'm supposed to go in the area of nursing. So a little bit of background. I am a registered nurse. I started out my first job in a stroke unit. And um, so my first job and the job that I actually resigned from, um, I got it in 2018. And I resigned just this year in January just because of the burnout. Um, it was a very heavy job that I just, it was costing me to get out of bed and, and head into work. Yeah. And there's so many areas of nursing that I would like to explore, but I need just kind of like direction into, you know, picking out exactly what I'm sure. supposed to go into. So let's first identify what specifically caused you to feel burnout in that last job? I, I think you said heavy. Was it the nature of the patients and what you were dealing with? What was the specific cause of burnout in that last nursing job? Definitely. So with stroke patients, um, adult stroke patients, there, you know, um, a lot of um, debilitating, debilitating after mass, after sure. having a stroke. So it was... Um, a lot of dependent stuff that they needed, um, I did enjoy giving the care, providing the care. Um, it may have also just been the environment that I was in, management specifically. Yep. Um, there wasn't a lot of just, I would think, equality. <laughs> and so that had a little bit to do sure. with it. I enjoy those. Good. So, so here's the deal. It's to, first of all, I don't want you to have any guilt, and I'm, and you haven't mentioned that you have, but I want to make sure I address this because we hear this a lot uh, from callers who are thinking about making a switch. You don't need to feel in any way a sense of guilt or shame over that particular type of nursing work really kind of eating away at you emotionally. It's really, really tough, heavy stuff. You are a caregiver. You just use that word. And so nursing is caregiving. So really, this is about exploring exploring all the different types of nursing and you know all the different types of nursing and you're exploring all of them and I want you having real conversations with other nurses to get from them almost like you would if you were to interview somebody back in high school about a profession and sit down and and the ins and the outs, the good, the bad, the ugly about that particular type of nursing. And here's what's going to happen. As your brain gathers the information, that's the logic side, your heart begins to filter that logical information and your heart's going to warm and kind of go ding, ding, ding to the type of caregiving, the specific people that you're giving care to. And so, you know, mm -hmm. you've got to look at everything. You know, uh, one of my best friends in the world, his wife is a NICU nurse. She, she loves taking care of those little babies that are just mm -hmm. fighting with everything they got. It's not too heavy for her. It gives her great lift and joy. Uh, but you know, I know there's all kinds of nurses. There's the nurses who check you in before surgeries. It's highly administrative. You've got nurses that are dealing with trauma in the ER. You've got all different kind of nursing. And I think you've got to be in a place where you go, I'm giving care, but I'm giving care to people that when I care for them and their particular situation, I'm lifted as opposed to feeling like it's too heavy. Does that make sense? Yeah. So this is just simple discovery. 
good old-fashioned conversations over coffee and uh, you've got all the connections you're already in and you're already qualified and just follow your heart to this you already know don't you I did. I was influenced into nursing because I had a heart surgery when I was three. So pediatrics is where I feel like I could go into. It's just I fear that it's going to negatively affect me emotionally just because I am a stay-at-home mom now with a toddler and a newborn. So I don't want to be, it's it's fearful to be affected emotionally. You know what I mean? Sure. You know, one of the things I would suggest is that you maybe uh, take a couple of sessions with a therapist and a counselor, somebody that's a professional, and talk about how uh, when you're in that caregiving function, how you are essentially projecting some of those scenarios into your own life. Talk to somebody professionally about that, because I think there are some tools that can help you uh, enjoy the work, but not carry so much of it with you. But you're going to need help. It's hard to do that on your own. Hey, good question, Selena. Thank you for calling in. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Joe is in Salt Lake City, Utah. Hi, Joe. How are you? Good. Thanks for taking my call. How are you guys? Better than we deserve, brother. What's up? I have a question. Um, We are close to paying off our mortgage and being debt-free completely. The approach we've been taking is probably a little different than what you've would recommend, I would say, because we just barely discovered you not too long ago just from friends. But anyways, um, what we've been doing is putting my entire paycheck towards the mortgage and um, and some above that, and then living off my wife's paycheck. We have a low interest rate of 2.3%. I'm just wondering if it's smart to continue what we're doing, just dumping a load onto it compared to just paying just a little bit at a time. But and when we're all done with all this, we should be, according to our math and calculators online, we should have it paid off in seven months if we keep wow. going the way we are. That's but wonderful. Hard to do that. I assume you're debt-free other than the house. Yes. Okay. Do you have an emergency have- fund of three to six months of expenses? We have uh, $15,000 in savings. What's your household income? Uh, 150000 Okay. It's probably a little slim. A little, less. a little less than three to six months, but probably pretty close. You're probably all right. And the only difference is I, I wouldn't define it by paycheck. I would just put both paychecks in a total at the top of the page, and I would throw as much of that as you can at this mortgage. And in a sense, that's the same thing you're doing. But instead of saying, uh, we're going to put my check and a little of my wife's towards it, we're just going to put the equivalent of those two things towards it out of your budget Um, and we do recommend you put 15 percent of your income into retirement while you're doing this and that might make it nine months instead of seven to pay off the mortgage but you're you're not doing anything wrong here man You're, you're heading in the right direction everything's going the right way this is the ramsey show Priced wireless provider and switch to Pure Talk. They use the same network as the larger providers for much less. For just $30 a month, get unlimited talk, text, and six gigs of data with no contract. The Irish family saves over $70 a month by switching to Pure Talk. Just go to puretalk.com and enter the promo code RAMSEY to save 50% off your first month. Pure Talk, simply smarter wireless. personality is my co-host today if you've been trying to pay off debt i know it feels like you're the only one who feels this level of weight 
it, it can be really lonely. It can be really frustrating. But you're not alone. Lots of people are tackling their debt, too. And they're feeling the same way you are. You don't have to be by yourself while you're doing this. Join a Financial Peace University class with other people. Uh, together, you'll learn the power of the proven plan to win with money and the accountability, the encouragement, the encouragement, the encouragement. It's a big deal. You celebrate with other people as you make progress. Right now, there's hundreds of virtual classes and hundreds of in-person Financial Peace University classes starting all over the country. You can join your choice of them. Find people that are doing what you're doing. They want to be debt-free so that they can build wealth and be outrageously generous. You can get access to the class and more tools only with a Ramsey Plus membership. Financial Peace University is part of Ramsey Plus. Start your free trial of Ramsey Plus by texting TRIAL to 33789. Text TRIAL to Two three three seven eight nine. Up next is going to be Shane in Greenville, South Carolina. Hi, Shane. How are you? Hi, Dave. I'm good. How are you? Better than I deserve. What's up? Well, I just have a quick question for you. Um, me and my husband are on baby step two, and we're down to our last two remaining debts. Um, one is a uh, car loan, and we're trying to figure out if we should. Um, trade that car in and have the loan paid off and buy a car in cash. Um, Because if we do that, you know, we'll be closer to um, just having our last debt, which is our student loan debt. Mm -hmm. And we should be finished paying that by the end of the year. Yeah. How much Um, do you owe on the car? We owe um, $11,300. Okay. And uh, what's your household income? Uh, $50,000. Okay. And do you like the car? We do. It's a 2017 Toyota Corolla. It has 89,000 miles on it. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's a good car. Um, okay. When I looked it up on Carvana or like Kelly Blue Book, they said we could give us around 11,000 for it. Yeah. The two rules of thumb that we use on whether you need to sell a car are, number one, can you be debt free everything but the house within two years from today? I think you can. Mm-hmm. If you keep the car. Do you? Yes. Okay. Number two is all of your vehicles added together, everything with um, motors and wheels of any kind added together equal more than half your annual income. And unless you have an, another car in the driveway that's really expensive, this you're not violating that rule either. Right. Now we have a, a 2008 Honda Odyssey. It's yeah. Off. Yeah. So I'm keeping it. Okay. And fight, fight awesome. on through. It's just, it's just going to add a few months to your debt snowball, uh, but uh, you're going to have the, a reasonably good car when you're done there. It's something that's not out of control. If you told me the car was thirty-three thousand dollars, I'd have sold it already. Okay. Okay. Because that would have been more than half your annual income, and you wouldn't have been able to pay it off with the student loans in two years, right? Right. It right. would. It okay. would have been the. Yeah, impe- I- it would have been a too big of an impediment. This is not a big enough move of the needle unless you just already hate the car, to get rid of it. It doesn't make sense. Chris is in Boise, Idaho. Hi, Chris. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave. How are you? Better than I deserve. How can Ken and I help? I have a question. I we My wife and I are in the process of transi- transitioning ownership from my father-in-law's company, um, and we've been in talks of how essentially my wife and I would pay off my brother-in-laws as their inheritance when my in-laws pass away. I'm wondering how do we save for that? Okay. Uh, You're buying the company or not? Not buying it. It's being passed down to us. But oh, how do but, 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 we and, save? And, and it's not being passed down to you. It's being passed down to you, but you still don't own it all. Half of it is going to be passed to the brother-in-law. Not officially. Officially, we would be owners on paper. On paper, But as I guess what I'm wondering, is there a quote-unquote inheritance, inheritance as if my wife and I weren't being passed the company wasn't being passed to us and my in-laws just died one day and the business gets sold off and we would all get 25%. But since my wife and I are going to be owners of the company, how do we go about 
saving to pay off her brothers. Why do her brothers need to be paid off? It's not their company. You're There's getting it before you're company. getting it before death, or, and you're going to be the owner of it. And then they die. There's nothing. There's nothing owed to the brothers. I don't understand. This doesn't make sense. That's the agreement that we've been in talks with my in-laws about. What is so the What is the agreement? Equitable. They're going to give you the company now, but when they die, you have to be, you have to give money to your brother-in-law as part of their inheritance. Yes. No, I don't want the company. This is screwed up. Okay. This is a mess. Okay. I I just what a mess. No, they don't. I mean, so what happens if you grow the company to double before they die? That is a question that needs to be asked, and that's why I'm calling to ask you before yeah. we have this structure a bunch is more screwed. This is a bad structure. Okay. So what's this company worth? Don't you generally say four times net profit net profit for yeah. the owner? Yeah. That would put it right now right around a million and a quarter. Okay. So what instead I would suggest you do is if they're going to give you a fourth of it and you have to buy out three-fourths, then 75% of a million and a quarter is what you owe your parents-in-law, and you need to pay that out of profits as fast as you possibly can. Give them 100% of the profits above you making a living wage until you get to that number, and that's, that number is about 800000 bucks. And so you're right. saying the, pro- the, pro- you're money, saying the profits after... My- I'm sorry? Sorry, I interrupted. Keep, keep going. That's okay. What did what, you say? So then... It's their money, and they can do what they want with it. Yeah, then they can that. leave that money to the brother-in-law. Great. I just had to think about it out loud with someone who was not involved. Yeah, this is the the way they're doing it. It is um, it's bass backwards, and you're going to get in a, you're going to get caught in the crosshairs here. This is not going to be good. So um, somebody's going to end up pissed off. Is what's going to happen here, and uh, really, <laughs> really bad. So the, what we suggest you do if you're buying out a business is that you don't do payments and you don't do debt, but I would suggest you set up your uh, a, a minimum living wage that you can live out of the business on reasonably and give 100% of the profits above that wage to your father-in-law until it reaches that number, which is should be 75% of a million and a quarter. So we'll call it uh, $800,000, $900,000, whatever it is. And it sounds like the profits are uh, about 400, right? About 300. Yes. Yeah. Depending on the year. Yeah. yeah. And so you, you'd be clear in three years. Okay. Maybe four, but somewhere in there you'll be clear. And and you're not obligated to give them anything except 100% of the profits above the living wage until you reach that number. When you reach that number, they're paid off, and then there is no strings attached to this company. No one has – you don't have any obligation after that. They can leave that other money to the other kids, and you've already gotten yours – your share when you when they knocked a fourth off of the company price. That makes sense? Absolutely. Yeah, that's a much better structure. It's not going to get you caught in the middle here. And then if they die before you're paid out, the, the agreement still stands. The heirs, the other three boys, will get the same thing they that the parents-in-law would have gotten from you because that, that piece of paper survives them. That deal survives them. Uh, and it doesn't it doesn't change anything. Yeah, that's a uh, um, yeah yeah that that's a much better idea. Let, let's get this over with. In other words, yeah. This is the Ramsey Show.
Solutions on the Debt Free Stage. Laurie is with us. Hi, Laurie. How are you? Hi, Dave. I'm doing great. Good. Welcome. Good to have you. Where do you live? I live in a suburb of Minneapolis, which I affectionately refer to as a land of snow and ice. <laughs> yes, it is. Well, welcome to Nashville. So good to have you. And all the way down here to do a debt free scream. How much have you paid off? I've paid off about a hundred or forty one thousand dollars in the last year. One hundred and forty one no, or forty one? Forty one thousand. Forty one thousand in yes. one year. Good for you. And your range of income during that year? Um, it started out at one twenty five thousand and now it's about one thirty thousand. Good for you. What do you do for a living? I work in clinical research. Okay. Cool. So I help run drug studies for new companies. Good, good busy year. Yes, yeah. a lot of COVID stuff yeah. going on. Yeah, I can imagine. I can imagine. What kind of debt was the 41k? Um, it started about, about 10 years ago. I got divorced and my ex-husband, all of a sudden he was gone and I had a mortgage and two little kids. Mm. Um, in five years, <laughs> sorry, I was laid off three times and got divorced. So life was hard. Yeah. Um, and then I was chaperoned a field trip, school field trip for my kid. And I was on the bus ride home and shout out to Dave Carlson. He asked, do you follow Dave Ramsey? I said, who's this Dave Ramsey guy? Where's he going? If I'm um, going to follow him, where's he going? <laughs> <laughs> um, so he introduced me to you. I bought your book. I, I kicked it into high gear. And then about two years ago, I have this bathroom that's been unfinished for 10 years. So my ex-husband gutted it. All of a sudden he was gone. I look at that bathroom. I know you have te- uh, two daughters. I don't know if you've ever had to share a bathroom with your teenage daughters, but it is not pleasant. I don't even, it wasn't even pleasant <laughs> when they had to share one, much less with me. Yeah. No. So yeah. I've always said, I want to finish that bathroom. I just want to finish that bathroom. And, and finally I'm like, everyone said, well, just take out a home equity loan. I said, no, Dave won't approve of that. And they're like, well, forget about Dave. Just take out a home equity loan. I'm like, no, I got to follow Dave. So then about two years ago, I said, I got to pay off that mortgage. So I put together a plan. I made double mortgage payments. That was my goal was to pay it off in 18 months. And I managed to do it in nine months. You paid off your house. Yes, I paid off my house. The whole house. The whole house. Not the bathroom, the whole freaking thing. (laughs) Yeah, so, and then after I did that, I've been taking all that money and throwing it into my savings. So come January, I will no longer have to share a bathroom with my two teenage daughters. (laughs) Touchdown. I love it. I'm teenage bathroom free. Yeah. 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 Way to go. So you paid off your house and everything. You're so weird. (laughs) I love it. Yeah, and you can't share that with everybody, but that's why I'm here, right? To share it with all you guys. This is a place you can share it with everybody. Everybody, everybody here that's watching this is happy for you. Yeah. Well done. So what's this house worth? Um, it's worth about $350,000. Wow. Plus or minus a bathroom. Wow. Yes. And now the goal then is to cash free, uh, cash flow the college for the kids. So they're yeah. 13 and 16. So and Look at you. And teaching them well, right? My daughter has a job. A third of her paycheck goes to her college fund. We're still working on the budgeting, but I know your daughter, Rachel, had budget problems. So yeah. there's hope yeah. for her, right? If there's your daughter hope. Yeah. <laughs> turns out, yeah. okay, mine will too. She turned out she teaches it now. So yeah, yeah, I know. Wow. Look at you. Way to go. Yeah. So. So there's still a tremendous amount of emotion in you as you took us back <laughs> to that catalytic moment. Uh, to all the single women, single moms out there that have heard the message, maybe they got a book, maybe they listen to the podcast, they watch the show, whatever, and they're going, I, I, it makes sense, but I don't think I can do it. What would you say to that single mom? You just got to keep working. I mean, I had a side hustle. I still do it. I sell brats and beer at major league football games and baseball games. And I always say manual label keeps me humble. Mm. You know, I'm no better than the other person on the side of the counter. They Mm -hmm. don't know I'm debt free. They might think I'm a nobody, but I'm not. Mm -hmm. And so just keep, keep trying, keep plugging away and you'll get there. Yeah, that's so good. Go Vikings, I'm guessing, right? Yeah. You, you yeah. were the trauma. <laughs> yeah. The, the interesting thing is the trauma is in the rearview mirror, right? Yeah. 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 It is. It's yeah. awesome. And you're driving away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, what does it mean to you? I mean, I know you're debt free, but this emotion is, is really you celebrating what you've overcome. How much stronger are you uh, as a result of walking through this debt free journey? Well, I look at myself when I. My husband was gone and I was nothing. I had no self-esteem. Um, he had to be removed from the house by a restraining order. Things mm-hmm. were bad. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was really hard, but I look at my kids and I have to show them that I can do it mm-hmm. because they have to do it sometime too. So yeah. my motivation was my daughters. And I look at them and they're turning into great young women. They're mm-hmm. both taller than me. That's a little hard for me to handle, but I'll get used <laughs> to it. <laughs> Um, and, and that was my motivation. And I say to all single moms, like, if I can do it, you can do it. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's scary and it's hard, but it's doable. Yeah, it is. That's what it comes down to. You're a hero, kiddo. Yes. Thank well you. Well done. You you completely tackled this and just <laughs> knocked the door down. That's just fabulous. Very, very well done. Okay, what do you tell people the key to getting out of debt is? No credit card debt. Pay everything in cash. Don't listen to everyone else who says just take out that loan. I, I own four. I've had four cars my entire life. I've paid cash for every single one. Mm. Keep them till they die. I don't care if you think I drive an old jalopy. It's mm-hmm. paid for. Mm-hmm. And your house is paid for. Yes. And you're how old? I am 49. So you, the goal is to pay it off by the time I turn 50. And, and you I did it. And I did it. And you have a $300,000 paid for house. You're so weird. <laughs> weird is you. good. You're awesome. <laughs> you are so awesome. Yeah, because everybody's broke and everybody's got an opinion about your money. It's, yeah. it's hilarious to me how, how people can't mind their own business, you know? It's just nuts. So way to go. Thank way you. Way to go. Just a powerful, powerful yeah. story. Very well done. The resilience that you've shown and the fight that you've shown is what's so impressive in this. Absolutely. I think people want to know, this is not debt related, but when the new bathroom is finished, what are you most excited about not seeing from your, from your daughters that you have to deal with now when you walk into your bathroom and it's just yours? There's no crap on the sink. There's no retainer. (laughs) There's no like 50 rings and jewelry and speaker sitting there blaring Taylor Swift. (laughs) Although I do like Taylor Swift. I I don't mean to knock her, but there's only so much you can take, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> hey, whatever motivates you, Dave, you know, that was yeah. a powerful motivator. Yeah. Well, and then, you know, you're in a position to cash flow their college. Yes. They, they won't yes. have any college yes. debt. And so you're breaking the cycle. You're breaking the chain. And um, there's no way that they walk. They see you walk through this and they're not uh inspired by you but also transformed themselves yeah into, no into more confident young women and so because they get to watch their mom the warrior princess <laughs> uh go, go into attack mode here so yeah. well done very well done oh there's the whole gang okay. yes Just saw them pop up on youtube there <laughs> very good Good stuff. Well done. Well done. We got a copy of The Legacy Journey for you. That is the next chapter in your story. Awesome. Want to hear from you when you're a Baby Steps millionaire. You're not that far now. You'll be there before you know it. I'm getting there, yeah. You'll be there before you know it with a paid for $300,000 house and retirement starting to build up now. Yep. All of these things are starting to happen. So very, very well done. Good work. And a copy of Total Money Makeover. In case you're on a bus ride somewhere and somebody says you need to follow Dave Ramsey, you can hand it to him, right? I will pass it on, definitely, because mine is, I have my own copy as well. There you go. Good stuff. So very, very well done. All right, Laurie from Minneapolis, Minnesota, debt-free house and everything. 41000 paid off in the last year, making 125 to 130 Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Three, two, one. I'm debt-free. That is how it's done. Wow. Let me tell you, uh, you you know, regardless of your political uh, assignment to things, we do know this, that 78% of the single moms live below the poverty level. So you you, you can talk about how you get there. You can talk about how you get out of there. We can talk about macroeconomics or, or discuss all kinds of different things around that subject. But uh, we just know because we work with so many single moms through uh, our coaching programs, our Financial Peace University, you work with them on getting jobs. And um, so getting that income going like she has done, yes, fabulously managing that income and creating this result by the time she's 49 years old, very impressive. Heroic. Heroic, that's the word. That's what heroes do. They're heroic. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) This is The Ramsey Show.
Ben Coleman Ramsey, personality, is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Patty is in New York City. Hi, Patty. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi. Thank you guys so much for taking my call. Sure. What's up? So I have a question um, pertaining to student loans. So when I was 18, I'm 21 right now. When I was 18, um, I went away to college. Um, made the mistake of getting myself in student loans, but I didn't finish with a degree. Mm -hmm. So I currently am $54,000 in debt with just an associate's degree because I ended up going to Suffolk County Community College and I ended up just getting, you know, my basic degree. Mm -hmm. So my question is, is that I'm deciding on going back to school, but the school that I want to go to will put me in more debt again, but it will also give me a very stable job. No, it won't. Schools don't give stable jobs. That's BS. Yeah, you have to go earn it. What do you want to do? What's the job that you think is stable that you're looking for? I want to be an ultrasound tech, which um, it, it's very specific, very hands-on. So I can't just go anywhere and like be trained for it. I specifically would have to go to a program for two years in order to get the chance to even start the career. How much is that program going to cost that you've researched? Um, so it's originally forty thousand dollars that I know I would be definitely like able to get financial aid. I'm just not sure how much, and I know it definitely wouldn't be the entire cost. Mm -hmm. And what does an ultrasound tech make? Uh, in New York, they make easily eighty to ninety thousand a year. Mm -hmm. on, on average, they can make even more depending on experience and location. Who said? Where'd you get that information? Uh, Google. <laughs> yeah. Well, there it is, Dave. That's uh, in stone because Google said it. Yeah. All right. Um, what do you do now? What do you make now? Um, I'm a part-time cashier at a grocery store. I make $17 an hour. Okay. What What, what is your so, associate's degree in? Uh, liberal arts, so... It's nothing specific. It was general studies. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, quick question on uh, how much aid do you think you would be able to get financial aid? So how much off of the 40000 at this one program would you uh, be able to get off? Um, I was looking into it, and um, it would be about, um, I can't remember exactly. Oh, it was 14000 a year, so twenty eight in total. Okay, that's that's a whole lot better, fourteen thousand a year. Uh, so, uh, the next question is: Have you done any research to see if there are other competitive programs or other options that will get you the same certification or training? Um, I have. Uh, are like they I cheaper? Said, I can. Only... Yes, but they're just not close to home. So what what would happen is if um, why, why does example, home there's... matter? You don't, you make seventeen dollars an hour in a part time job. Move. <laughs> I I live at home with my parents. Oh, okay. That does matter then. Yeah. yeah. Good answer. Okay. Yeah. So, so you're twenty four. I'm twenty one. Twenty one. Okay. Yeah. Well, let me, Dave, you weigh in here, but I think the first thing that you've got to do is you've got to get a uh, $20 an hour job, $25 an hour job. Right now, companies are begging people that have a pulse and some good character and the ability to show up on time. And I think you've got to mm -hmm. be paying attention to what's out there. And it ain't part time. Mm -hmm. It's full time because you're living with mom 80 and dad. 80 hours a week. Yeah. You're going crazy to save up $14,000 mm -hmm. a year, but you've got this debt you got to deal with too. But uh, listen, you can do this i think you save up and pay cash for it yes. but i want you to do two or three things okay i'm with ken okay. you've got to get your hours up and you got to get better jobs okay. and you you, yeah. you really need to be working about 80 hours a week you don't need to mm -hmm. see you don't need to you, you're you don't need any social life if you want to do this you got to set some stuff aside no partying yep. you're gonna to have to go for mm -hmm. it okay now yeah. if you got mm -hmm. if you, I, and I, the second thing is i want you to shop th I, Get the details from the people, not Google. I want you to mm -hmm. find three mm -hmm. different schools that will mm -hmm. give you this certification. Get the best deal you can get from mm -hmm. all three schools. Now, okay. let's pretend that the school that you that you just gave us it as twenty eight thousand off of forty means you need twelve. Does that sound right? Correct. Yeah. Okay. 
you only need $12,000 to go to that school. That's mm-hmm. not much because now you're mm-hmm. working 80 hours a week. Mm-hmm. And, and the plan we're giving you, okay? So you're going to go work 80 hours a week. You're going to get $12,000 together. Now, if that's – and that's your dream school, correct? Correct, yeah. Okay. That's my dream career. Now, yeah. let's no, – I didn't say career. I said school. That particular school that is the one you have selected that you would like to go to because it's close to home, right? It, yeah. It's, it's, I wouldn't say it's my dream school. It's my only option. No, 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 no. No, it's not your only option. It's your only option if you live at home. Mm, true, true. Okay. If you go to upstate New York and they pay you to go there mm-hmm. and you're going free and they give you $10,000 to live, you can go up there. Mm. It's not your only That's option. True. It's the only option you have found so far, but you haven't done much shopping yet. That's correct. You're buying a $40,000 mm-hmm. item. You need to do some better shopping. And get yeah. more bids. Now, here's what I want you to do. I want you to find the other school that will give you uh, not 28000 in scholarships, but will give you to where, where you need 12 out of pocket. I want you to, let's say that you only need six out of pocket at this other school. And then I want you to go mm-hmm. back to the first school and say, hey, these guys are trying to get me to go over here. And they're offering mm-hmm. me... Everything but 6000 If you want me to come, you're going to have to match that. Mm-hmm. Little negotiation there. <laughs> gotcha. This phone call just made you thousands of dollars if you follow <laughs> what we taught you. Yeah. Okay? Mm-hmm. So, number one, lots mm-hmm. of hours and better jobs. I'm serious as a heart attack about working 80 hours a week. I want you to be exhausted, but I want you to have $20,000 cash in the bank before you know it to ready to do this. Okay. Number mm-hmm. two, okay. three detailed bids from the three different schools of exactly what they will offer you and then play them against each other in a negotiation technique to get the best deal working for you. Okay. Okay. Number three, the failed premise in this whole discussion at the beginning of it was that somehow this is going to be a magic wand and your life is all going to be okay because you're a, a, a tech at the end of this. An ultrasound tech. Wrong Mm -hmm. answer. Where Mm -hmm. you go to school, what you learn is almost never the secret sauce. You are the secret sauce. Your character, your ability to kick doors down and make stuff happen, you are what makes you successful. Not a degree, not a certain school that you go to. There is no correlation in any piece of research on the planet based on where you go to school and whether you're successful or not. Mm-hmm. But there is a correlation between character qualities and who's successful. Mm-hmm. There, perseverance, yeah. Yeah. fight, chutzpah, poise, confidence, integrity. These are the things that make people successful, not degrees and not a certain stinking school. It, once you're once you're an ultrasound tech, they don't even care where you got that from. All they care is you got the certification. Now we can hire you. And I've had ultrasounds, and I, I've gone in for MRIs, and I've gone in for this. I never once asked the tech where they went to school. <laughs> uh, oh, wait a minute! I can't. I can't. You went to that school. I can't let you do the MRI. I can't let you do the ultra. You know, never once did I stop them from running an ultrasound on my wife with one of our babies because of where they went to school. That's absolute trash and BS. Yep. Most people don't know where their lawyer went to school. They don't know where their doctor went to school. They don't know where their real estate agent went to school. Where you went to school is the biggest joke on the planet. It's the most overrated bunch of crap, and it's destroyed the dadgum higher education world. You just wait till this new documentary, Borrowed Future, comes out in October. It's going to blow your all's minds. This is The Ramsey Show. here we just launched a brand new listener survey we want to know what you think about the show you'll be entered to win a 100 dollars amazon gift card no purchase necessary take the survey at ramseysolutions.com slash survey or text survey to 33789 
This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studios, it's The Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today, number one best-selling author and author of the book that is just released in pre-sale. Pre-order is available. Pay from paycheck to purpose. The clear path to doing work you love. You can get it at RamseySolutions.com right now uh, for twenty dollars, and you get almost two hundred dollars worth of goodies with it. Uh, goodies being stuff like the ebook, the audio book. Um, uh, ticket to the live stream. There is all kinds of things happening there. So check it all out from paycheck to purpose. We will actually ship these books in November on the actual pub date, but a pre-sale is where you get the best possible deal. And Christie's new book comes out next week, and so you've just got a few days to get Take Back Your Time, The Guilt-Free Guide to Life Balance. Uh, yeah. And all the goodies with it on pre-sale, uh, just a few days to take advantage of that. So you ought to probably pick them both up while you're there at RamseySolutions.com. Chris is with us in Santa Rosa, California. Hi, Chris. Whoa, wait a minute. I'll try that again. Chris, there you are. Hey, what's up? Hey, Dave and Ken. Uh, thanks for taking the call. Sure. How can and, we help? Uh, well, before I get into it, I uh, have listened to Borrowed Future, and that is just really wonderful. First class. Well, thank you. But anyways, so... Um, I'm uh, coming into my golden years, and I watched my dad play golf for 25 years, and I don't want to do that. <laughs> so, okay. Um, so what I want to do is um, kind of go into um, building families. I have a mission statement here, build and equip family teams to produce successful 30-year-olds. And uh, so mostly for Ken, I got – that's my uh, getting clear – Qualified, I spent about uh, 25 years with my wife raising our kids and homeschooling. And uh, they've all graduated from college and are well married and employed and everything. Um, step three, get connected. I'm kind of there and I'm kind of on the get started. And that's the main thing I want to talk about is getting started. So I've got some outline for some training programs. But I want to kind of brainstorm and say, should I do that? Like webinars, podcasts, seminars, stuff like that. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah. My, that's my question. Yeah, yeah. All, all, all of the above. Because yeah. Yeah. you don't know what's necessarily going to stick. Yeah. We, we try everything around here. And uh, sometimes we're surprised by what doesn't work. And sometimes we're surprised by what does work. And sometimes we're not surprised at all. But uh -huh. we, we try it all. I mean, we've got YouTube channels and podcasts and radio shows and books and live events and digital classrooms and in-person classrooms and coaches. And so we're, we've got a whole bunch of different ways to help you with your life transformation and training. And you probably, I mean, you, you, don't have, you can't launch them all at one time. It's too much. But uh, right. there's no reason not to try uh, over a period of time a bunch of different things. Yeah. And, yeah. and Chris, what I would tell you to do is just come up with a basic methodology. Keep it super, super simple. You know, uh -huh. Dave, Dave challenged me on this several years ago and all of the Ramsey personalities. And if you can come up with a very clear path, okay, so if you were sitting down with a couple right now and they've got five and six and seven-year-olds and they said, uh -huh. how'd you do it? How'd you and your wife do it well? How would you tell them? Uh, what they need to do that you know that you all did and you know that it worked. Keep it really simple and begin to come up with a simple methodology. That's where I would start. Before you start podcasting and, and webinars and things, come up with what your clear path is and then begin to test that because that will change the way you say it, what you add to it, all of that will happen. And uh, I'm curious to know if you're involved in a church by any chance. Yeah, and actually we're transitioning from one part of the country to another to be close to grandkids so we're kind of great uh, we're where we're moving to is uh, a good church with a pretty large homeschool contingent great and, uh, great is this going to be a side oh, hustle he's retired uh, oh you've retired well i have a 
uh, like a handyman sort of business. So it's kind of, I can uh, monitor moderate one and build the other one up at the same time. Perfect. Well, yeah. go really slow. Uh, what I was asking about the church uh, is, is you begin to get into community there where you've got this built-in demographic, you know, parents or is your demographic with younger kids. And if you can get an opportunity to volunteer your time uh, to maybe teach a class at a church, uh, that is a great way to test this material out and test it out without any pressure. And then the other temptation is, is to, you know, pour a lot of money in it, feel like, well, I can pour some gas on the fire when there was actually no flame. So really test it, test it, test it, work on it, and then slowly begin to put it out. A podcast is a great way to do it, or even a YouTube channel, because again, your barrier for entry is almost non-existent. This is hardly anything you got to do there. The principles in your material won't change. The processes that you use will change, and they will polish, and they will update. And so yeah, spending a ton of money on your uh, first round of product is a bad idea because a lot of it's going to end up in the trash and uh, your, your prototype, so to speak. You know, here's an example. When we started the baby steps, the first baby step was not $1,000. It was get out of debt. And then we kept running into people's tire would blow out and they didn't have the money to fix their tire. And so they quit the whole stinking program. And so we figured out putting a thousand dollar, a little bit of a pad on the front end, was the um, answer to uh, you know fixing the baby steps, making them work. So it iterated. But if I had uh, twenty five thousand dollars worth of stuff with the wrong baby steps on it, it would have all gone in the dumpster, you know. And so you're going to change what you do. Now the principle didn't change. The principle: save money, get out of debt, live on less than you make, you know, live, live on a budget, be generous. These are the principles we teach from Scripture. Uh, on money, but uh, how you implement that is, is the process, and how we teach you to implement it is the process, and it has evolved over the 30 years that we have done this, and that's what's going to happen. Yeah, well, I mean, hey, just another personal example. Uh, he called in, and he was repeating the seven stages. Well, yep. you know this, and our leadership knows uh, That's not what I came up with four years ago. I was really trying to figure out how to create a very simple um, and explainable process, clear path for people, and it wasn't that. Now let's get clear, get qualified, get connected, get started. Yep. That didn't exist for uh, about three and a half years, and it was just constantly trying to listen to the audience as you coach and as you talk to the people and share the message you want to share you're right the polishing is what's beautiful about that but that's the activity got to stay active got to stay really really busy in delivering that content yeah i I think uh chris you could probably go at this a little bit like i did a long time ago i had a a, a little small office and did some one-on-one coaching yep and i taught a few little classes here or there and i taught a sunday school class and the Financial Peace University materials, some of what we teach to this day in FPU was in that original Sunday school class. Not all of it, but some of it. And uh, it was just a a place to uh, interact with the user, you know, of, of the material. Changes everything. This is The Ramsey Show. What makes our show unique is that we genuinely care about our listeners. We're intentional about choosing the best advertisers to recommend. Blinds.com is no exception. They offer high quality window treatments at unbelievable prices and they make it simple to shop blinds, shades, and interior shutters with easy online ordering, free shipping, and a guaranteed perfect fit. Go to blinds.com and take advantage of this week's special savings. personality is my co-host today open phones at 888 825 
888-825-5225. We want to hear from you guys that are listeners of The Ramsey Show. We're doing a survey of you right now. We want to know what's going on. And one of the things we're asking is how much debt you paid off. So far, we've heard of almost $241 million in debt from just the people that have taken the survey. Not bad at all. So if you'd like to take the survey, you'll be in a drawing for an Amazon gift card, $250. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. A lot of not bad at all is going on here. Check it out. Text survey to 33789. Tell us what you think about this show. Text survey to 33789 or visit RamseySolutions.com slash survey. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Jerry is with us. Jerry is in Mobile, Alabama. Hi, Jerry. How are you? Hey, I'm so great. Thank you for uh, for putting me on. Absolutely. How um, can we help? Yeah, so I have a small-based, uh, home-based business, and I teach blacksmithing and knife-making uh, just here outside Mobile, Alabama. Um, as I've been going, getting to grow, I actually just pulled the trigger on doing this full-time, and so now I'm wanting to open up a, a permanent uh, location a little bit closer to the beach area uh, to help kind of take advantage of the 7 million tours that we have that come each year to visit the lower Alabama area. I found a building that has a great layout, a great location. I've been negotiating back and forth with the leasing agent for the contract terms, um, but I proposed a early termination clause just in the event in case my business fails. However, he came back and said, no, he will not put in an early termination clause and even with a penalty, and he wants a five-year lease, but he's also open to subleasing in case the business fails. I lost a business in 2008, which uh, led to a bankruptcy, and so it really kind of changed my perspective, and I'm just trying to see if this is a, a wise agreement to enter into, but my wife feels like this is going into debt, so she said, why don't you call Mr. Ramsey and see what he says. Okay. Well, I don't consider that going into debt. It is a contractual obligation, obviously, um, and so it does feel like that, but uh, we've signed leases uh, here in the in the days before we owned the real estate that we're in, and um, we just want to be super conservative about that, and this sounds like it's a little over the edge of conservative. Given that your business is not even running, operating full-time yet, um, and we're jumping into a five-year lease, if you'd been running it at least for a year, mm-hmm. I'd feel a whole lot better about it. Ken, your thoughts? Yeah, I, I, this is one of those things, Jerry, where you're really excited. And, and by the way, congratulations yeah. on, on doing this. I love this. is yeah. craftsmanship. I love this business. And you've been doing well enough to where you're saying, okay, now I'm doing it full time. I want you to do what is very hard for human beings to do. And I struggle with this as much as anybody. And that is be patient. There are other buildings there, there is a, another season by which you'll be able to get in that location that's closer to the beach that would be able to take advantage of the tourism. This temptation to move now comes from, I got to strike while the iron is hot. And, mm. and the reality is it's not hot enough. Uh, I think you no need to stay. No pun intended yeah, with the blacksmith. I, I'm not, that's right. Yeah. That's right. I'm not trying to do that. <laughs> yeah, but, you, but you did it anyway. Did you it fell anyway. right into it. <laughs> you did it. <laughs> it's really true. It's amazing how that happens. I've heard legendary <laughs> stories of Dave doing it. Anyway, here's the thing, Jerry. Be patient. Uh, let's get this business really stable. Uh, moving from part-time to full-time is a big big jump. So let's prove to ourselves that we can actually keep this thing going, keep expenses really, really low, build this thing, build this thing, be patient, be patient. The the line I want to stick in your head, Jerry, if I can, I'm a big Braveheart uh, fan. You, have you ever seen the movie Braveheart, Jerry? It's been a while. It's been a while. You remember that scene where there's the big battle and and uh, William Wallace picks the fight and the and the the infantry, the, excuse me, the cavalry uh, is coming at him and they got the long sticks and he's saying hold, hold, hold. Yep. Yep. That's your theme right now. And there's going to be a season. <laughs> yeah. But listen, that's where you at. I think that is where you got to be. Just be patient right now. The time to do this will be so abundantly clear that you won't have to call the Rams you show to say what do you think mm. i think it'll be really obvious three three things yeah. came to mind while ken was talking number one i do not move forward on large business deals where sharon is uncomfortable mm-hmm. every time mm-hmm. i go against my wife's feeling i have a bad feeling about this i make a mistake you're about to make a mistake number two the best in 30 plus years of doing business the best business decisions I have made 
bar none, were the deals I decided not to do. Mm-hmm. The ones I look back that I walked away from that and I go, oh, thank God. And I walked away from that and I go, oh, thank God. What if I had done that? Where would we be today? Oh, man. Mm. And, uh, and so on. And so the deals I've walked away from. And then the last thing is this. Uh, you have uh, one option. And so you have no negotiating power mm. whatsoever and no emotional margin for negotiating because you only have one option you've fallen in love with this one place i want you to go find three other places that you can do this you'll probably find one you can prop up for a one-year lease i would do a one-year okay your, and your wife would do a one-year and it's three yeah, doors yeah, down yeah. from the thing you're looking at and it's kind of like going na 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 you know, but I'm kidding. I don't know. I mean, it might be a little smaller. It might not be the perfect thing, but it's your, it's your, it's your version one. And maybe this bigger deal is your, is your version two or version three later and go get in that same general neighborhood and take advantage of those same, the, 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 the not take advantage in a negative way, but I mean, to, to, be in a position to serve those tourists that you're wanting to serve, but in a different location than that particular piece of property. I always know when I feel pressured to something and it's like a problem and it's like a hesitation and you called us. So you kind of got that. It's like, I really want to do this. I'm excited about it, but it feels like it's a stretch feels like it's over the top. When I start feeling that it usually means I don't have enough options. Mm -hmm. When I put three or four more options on the table, options are power. When it comes to negotiation, options are power. When it comes to decision making, you'll make better decisions when you have three or four valid ways you can do this. But always there'll be a, you know, one's better than two's, better than three's, better than four. You'll be able to prioritize which one's better, but you've got, I can do it in one of those three areas. Yeah. So, and that changes the whole picture. Yeah. One of the things I found, Dave, I know in my journey is that this idea of kicking the door down has been romanticized in Hollywood movies and on some really bad success type motivational posters. But the reality is, is that rarely happens. You know, this idea, if you've got to kick a door down, uh, it's rare that I've had to kick a door down, but I've had some, I've walked through some doors that swung wide open and timing um, is really, really important. And I think sometimes when we've got a dream, not sometimes, when we have a dream uh, that we deeply long for, uh, we can get kind of sucked into this let's go now and, it, yeah. and and because of the passion behind it we love it i mean he, he's a craftsman he loves hey, the trade and everybody listening could tell that you and i are both excited about his business oh yeah <laughs> love it it's hey, a great I buy, idea i buy a knife from him and by the way if you've never seen a blacksmith do their thing if you've never oh, been to one of those man. historical homes it really is a lost trade and it's yeah. a wonderful wonderful thing and people are embracing that kind of stuff so you know the key here is is is, is don't try to force it yep you won't have to when the time is right, you won't have to force it. I, I just found that successful men and women, yes, they push hard. Yes, they work hard. They don't give up. But this idea of kicking doors down and bullying things over, that's, that's a little, that's, that's been mystified and Hollywoodized. I don't think it's necessary. It gets you in big trouble. But if you're patient, uh, the right door will open. Yeah. So I'm not doing that deal. No, Let's don't do that deal. That no. deal is too long. His wife's uncomfortable with it. Yeah. He's really uncomfortable with he it. He is too. He's he's less uncomfortable yeah. than she is. But you don't. I don't go against my spouse. Yep. The peace that yep. passes understanding. That's it. You need that peace to move forward on big deals. And you know what? He's a pull of Dave Ramsey. This is what I've learned from Dave. Maybe tell that guy I'm walking. But I will tell you what I will do. I'll do a year lease. Other than that, thanks, but no yeah. thanks. Yeah. You, what do you got to lose? When you wouldn't give me my termination clause, you lost me. That's it. And walk on your heel, baby. This is The Ramsey Show.
in the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the debt-free stage. Sean and Mary are with us. Hey, guys. Hey, how you doing, Hi, Dave? Dave? Welcome, welcome. Where do you guys live? Sacramento, California. All right. Welcome to Nashville. Thank and all you. the way here to do a debt-free scream, how much have you paid off? We paid off $255,000. Woo! I love it. And uh, how long did this take you? Too long. Four nope. years. <laughs> Four years. It's always too long. I agree. And your range of income during that time? Uh, we started about 140000 and we had a couple good years in sales and bumped up over two hundred. Oh, yeah. Oh, good. What do you guys do for a living? Uh, vice president of sales for a tech company. Okay. I handle the five monkeys off the set right now. The five monkeys. I am the ring leader. I am the ring master. Yep. I love it. All right. 255000 in four years. What kind of debt was this? It was our mortgage. You paid off your ass. Yeah. You're weird. We did it. I love it. In Sacramento freaking California, I too. I mean, this is not a cheap real estate market. It's been good to us. It's a paid off house. Wow. What's this house worth? Well, you know, it's been a good year, so I guess now about six hundred. But wow. it depends on the day, I guess. It might be six fifty cool. tomorrow in California. Stop. Very cool. <laughs> good for you guys, man. And you're young. How old are you two? Uh, I'm thirty six. I'm a smidge older, but okay. you know. we don't Still. need to know. Well, yeah, <laughs> we're moving you. on. I'm thirty six. Thirty six plus a smidge. A smidge. There you go. Smidge. Right. There we go. Now we have the, we have the algebra formula now. Figure it out. So way to go, guys. Man, that's Thank impressive. You. So what started you on this journey four years ago? Well, it, it probably goes back further. In 2009, we got married. We have some good friends that gave us the total money makeover when we got married. Mm -hmm. And I was getting my MBA in finance, and I said, you know, I know all this stuff. Yeah, I don't need, I I don't need this. MBA. But I read it, and I thought it was interesting. And yeah. then I started doing it by myself. And I we got through all our consumer debt, but I was really doing it by myself. It took us four years just to get through that mm. and because we weren't really working together. Mm. Um, and then we moved to California. They don't teach that in the MBA. <laughs> no, they don't. No, they don't. Then we moved to California, and Mary wanted to buy a house. And I said, well, how about if we do Financial Peace University together, then we can buy a house. Oh. And I said, okay. What harm? It's just a class. I'll just, I'll watch some videos. <laughs> yeah. When you get me that house. That's yeah. great. That's, yeah. a, that's a good trade. <laughs> what I like happen? it. Okay. What, what, what's the worst thing that could happen? Oh, God. <laughs> Four years. <laughs> it escalated really quickly. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. But then she loved it so much, we started teaching the class. So oh, wow. that's what really kicked us into gear for the house. That's we, serious then, yeah. 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 So you we, guys, so proud of you. Thank you. Well done. How many classes have you taught? Oh, we taught three. Well, thank you. Yeah. It's like thank a built-in date night, you know. Yeah. If you go, I got to go coordinate. We got to yeah. go. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, you got five kids. We, we, any excuse. Yeah. We're, any. You know, yeah. Any. We love them, but it's, we love them at home. Yeah, That's right. Good job. Well done. Man, you got no house payment. It's amazing. I How's mean, it feel? It's, it's pretty incredible. We've had to we paid it off in July, so we've had this is our second month of not having a mortgage payment. It's been wow. uh, it's been good. We were able to come out here, so we, our first uh, first yeah. big thing. We promised the kids to come out to Nashville, so here we are. That's fun. Yeah. That's true. Way to go. Yeah, so uh, you got a, we've got a young couple here, and this is because you guys are definitely young. Let me just say that. All right, uh, and and I'm just curious how the conversation changes. Mm. You're because you're, you're you're moving towards paying this house off. You get there yeah. now. You're two months post paying this baby off. How are the conversations changing around money and what you're dreaming about? What are you looking forward to? I said this before we left. I said you know we've been pushing so long towards getting the house paid off, mm -hmm. and we did our last you know big payment to finish it. And I said. I kind of feel poor for the first time in a while because we've sent all this money out the door and now I don't really want to go, you know, spending a lot on things, but there are things we've been waiting to do, mm -hmm. but should we do them now? I don't know. So it's the letting go of that, mm -hmm. of the intensity, which four years, it's not gazelle, but it's not too slow either. No, so that's pretty, that's shifting pretty far gears. Yeah, yeah, shifting gears has been a little. Wow. Yeah, I think the key there is, I mean, we, we've been very intentional with not doing certain projects on the house or not doing big vacations, just doing little ones during the house payoff. And now we get to do some fun stuff, but we're also, we want to make sure we do the right things and right. spend the money in the right places. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're wise later, but have some fun with it. Yeah. yeah. Way to go. Way to go. I'm so proud of y'all. Thank you. What a, what a killer hero couple. You guys are just heroes. So well done. Very, very fun. What are, now you're teaching the class. You're baby step seven. I mean, you're there. Uh, what do you tell people the key to getting out of debt is? You're, you're actually experts. 
I think that's to you. I don't know. Gosh. You really can't do it unless you're doing it together. Mm-hmm. And I love that we've watched both the the financial piece, the original set, and then the new set we did is that two years ago. Yeah. We like to be nerds and compare the differences in your little monologues. <laughs> we kind of prefer the the first set to the new set in just a couple places. We like when you throw uh, the Barbie but, over the shoulder. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they like vintage Dave. Vintage yeah. for vintage, yeah. but we I say did some stuff in there that'll get you put in jail. Now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Only in California. Yeah. yeah. Throw Barbie over your shoulder. That's just like gosh, what kind of yeah. what kind of maniac? What kind of, what kind of, what kind of wow. you know, male sexist pig are you? Yeah. Our yeah. favorite kind. <laughs> <laughs> so working together. We're gonna, I'd say the other key is the budget. So we at the at the beginning I mentioned I was doing it by myself with um at, with our consumer debt. And I did spreadsheets galore. I'm the nerd, and I would have all sorts of spreadsheets. And I'd sit her down, and I'd say, look at all these great spreadsheets. I'm and an MBA. Look at this. Blind. Just, like, numbs up. He would and sit me. I'd be, like, on a stool next to the computer, and he's in the computer, like, the, the, the desk chair with the mouse and the things. <laughs> yeah, so he, and he's just, like Captain Kirk, and then yes. you're, like, off to the side. Yes, you know? I was, like. Yeah. Waiting for it to be over. Yeah. <laughs> but when, we, but when, <laughs> when every dollar came out, when every dollar came out, that was the key. I every mean, we had it on our huge, phones, huge. and we were able to, to see uh, everything together and it was more it was it was not a spreadsheet but it still was able to keep us on track of yeah. what was happening and do our transactions together it was yeah. uh it was complicated enough but not too much yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah that's what it's supposed to be yeah well done all right so you've been doing the retirement savings all along yes we have how much is in that 401ks and roth iras so last week uh when the stock market went up we were at just over a million so whoa uh, we are uh, with the house, with the house. So, oh, so you're Baby Steps millionaires. So we just hit a million last week, so we're Baby Steps Baby Steps millionaires. millionaires. Yeah. And Baby Steven, and, and, and you're not even uh, 36 and a smidge. I mean, my gosh. <laughs> wow. That's yeah. impressive. It is. I mean, wow. We're talking about major, major money and impact. Yeah. That's that's in your yeah. future. That so has yeah, $600,000 paid for house and over half a million dollars in yeah. in wow. investments is what we're and, saying. And if you you know go back 12 years, as you say, anything you do for long enough, you do it the right way. 12 years from when we first started in 2009, and we built it up, and now we're here we are. Yeah, and it really ca- works. Like a case study right out of the <laughs> right out of the survey. Yeah. That's right. Well done. Well done. And um, you brought the kiddos. We sure did. All five of we them. We might have left five. one in. Omaha. I don't know if it made the trip. There's <laughs> a home alone somewhere. <laughs> oh, may, or in the airport or something in the in a, in a locker. Yeah. All right. So they, uh, those of you at home, uh, his T-shirt says baby. Her, uh, 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 Mary's T-shirt says step, and then the kids spell out letters on theirs that say seven. Yeah. Yeah. S E V E N. It's all right. It's all right. We <laughs> we got it. I love it. Baby step seven. They're there, and they're not so even awesome. forty years old. No. Wow. Very, very, very cool. All right. The kiddos' names and ages. All right. We have Joseph here, who is eleven. Uh, we'll go over here, I guess. Ambrose is nine. Mary Augusta is six. And uh, Stephen here is five. And the little baby will be one next month. All right, little baby. Good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's fun. You guys are amazing. We got a copy of The Legacy Journey for you. That is your next chapter in your story. That you completely changed the legacy of all of these kiddos. I'm so proud of y'all. You're Thank such you. a neat couple. Thank well you. done. Thank well you. done. You deserve every bit of the success and all the hard work you've poured into this. You're Proof it can be done in America today. Absolutely amazing. All right, Sean and Mary and the tribe from Sacramento. House and everything, 255000 paid off in four years, making 140 to 200. Count it down. Let's hear a debt free scream. Three, two, one. We're, We're debt free. Man, that's powerful. The number of people that are doing their debt-free scream and simultaneously becoming Baby Steps millionaires are counting up. It's happening more and more. This is The Ramsey Show.
Ken Coleman Ramsey personality, host of The Ken Coleman Show, author of the number one bestseller, The Proximity Principle, and the new book that will also be a number one. comes out in November, and it's on pre-sale now. It's called From Paycheck to Purpose, The Clear Path to Doing Work You Love. Uh, We're going to spend a lot of our lives at work. We should be doing something we love, and we should be doing something that's profitable simultaneously. And they're not mutually exclusive. You don't have to be broke to be happy. That's a mythology thing that floats around. Actually, Ken addresses that. So you can pre-order the book at RamseySolutions.com. And right now, while it's in pre-order, you get about $100 worth of uh, extras with it. Quite a nice bundle when you order the book for $20 in pre-sale. Beverly's with us. Beverly's in Boise. Idaho. Hi, Beverly. How are you? Hi, Dave. Hi. Hi, Ken. Thank you for taking my call. Sure. What's up? I have a very simple question for you. How much cash is too much cash to keep at home? And where would you put it? Where should you put it since the banks are only giving you 1%? Hmm. So you're a, a cash under the mattress woman, are you? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's some coffee cans buried in the backyard. <laughs> so how much cash do you want to keep at home? Well, you always say pay cash for stuff. Well, obviously, you cannot go down to the car store and put $70,000 of cash on their desk. So You cannot go down to the what store? The automobile store. And put seventy thousand dollars cash? Did you say seventy? Yeah. You're buying a nice to car. Buy a, to buy a new car. To you're, buy a new truck. You're buying a nice truck. All right. <laughs> well, I I don't do that when I'm buying a seventy thousand dollar item. I wire it. Okay. I, I, I don't carry cash in. Now, if I'm negotiating with an individual for a used item, I might use the power of cash like we have taught and wave it under their nose and see if I can get a better deal. I've done that. I'm not above doing that. But I don't I um I don't I don't think I'm going to recommend Beverly walks down with a suitcase full of money like a drug dealer to a $70,000 car purchase. I'm just going to let you wire that money in. So you would put the money in the bank and wire it and get one percent well you're not getting anything in the bottom of your mattress that's true yeah <laughs> so it's it's you know i know that it's answer. not the one percent it's i don't want you to get robbed i don't want somebody to knock you in the head and take 70 grand out of your house i don't have 70 grand in my house so that's just when you say you pay cash for stuff you keep your money in a bank or a credit union or something, and yeah. then you wire it. Yeah, and it, and I wire it, and meaning I don't go into debt is what I mean when I pay cash. Now I have a pocket full of cash right now. I I carry a uh, you know a money clip in my front pocket that's usually got a thousand bucks in it, but that just because I like have, I'm a redneck, I like having some money in my pocket, right. you know. But that's just walking around money, and if I want to buy something or you know most of what that wallet goes for is tips. For, uh, you know, when okay. I park a car or when I am uh, finish up playing a game of golf and a guy cleans my clubs, you know, that kind of stuff. Or I when I come over and mow your lawn, you're Yeah, really when Ken generous. comes over and washes dishes for us, we give him a little tip. And, <laughs> By but, the way, uh, I want to point out, don't don't come to some live event and, and try to take money off of Dave because he's also got something else in his, in his, in his back pocket. <laughs> I just, I just think I should point that out. That could be a bad scenario yeah, for well, somebody I'm trying not, to take I'm your not, cash. I'm not going to get robbed. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Nobody wants to rob me. But the, uh, I'm not, I'm not really muggable. I'm just huggable. But the, uh, 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 but yeah, the, uh, <laughs> but anyway, the, uh, uh, yeah, I don't walk around with a bunch of cash in that regard. By when I say cash is king at the beginning of the show, it doesn't mean that Jesus isn't king. It means that the ca- that cash has power, and paying for things rather than going into debt to get them is power. And so, um, you know, I, I know a, a few people that keep five or ten thousand dollars cash in a little safe in their house, just in case they you know wanted to grab a hold of a little money for some reason or another on a short notice, and they. ATM was jammed up or something, then that's okay. But I, you know, I, I don't believe in keeping fifty, a hundred, two hundred thousand uh, dollars. You, you're starting to get into the land of preppers and stuff like that. Then, and I'm, I'm not, I'm not that guy, and I don't recommend that. So, interesting discussion though, Beverly. I, 
I have a lot of curiosity about me what's too. going on at your house at this point. I've got to tell you, Dave, I, part of me would love to see Beverly walk in <laughs> with some armed security <laughs> with a suitcase and plop it up on the counter and go, I'd like that truck right over there. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you could get a discount. <laughs> I'll guarantee you she can get a discount. I think so. She's awesome. Gavin is with us. Gavin's in Chicago. Hey, Gavin, what's up? Hey, Dave. Thanks for having me. Sure. What's up? I uh, wanted to ask you a question. Can I afford to go to Hawaii with my wife for a friend's wedding? <laughs> now, where do you have the money? I I think we do. She's worried. We've never spent this much money um, on a Do trip you before, have the so. money in cash without going into debt to do it is what I'm asking. Oh, ab- absolutely. Yeah, we're okay. at four, five, six. Okay. Uh, uh, baby steps. You're in baby steps four, five, and six. And how much is the trip? Uh, we're thinking like seven grand. Yeah, sounds about right. And you've got that money. And what do you guys make a year? We make about one hundred eighty thousand dollars a year. Why could you not afford this? <laughs> because we're so cheap. <laughs> <laughs> now the truth comes out. Yeah, <laughs> it has nothing to do with the arithmetic. It's the emotional state. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I mean we're trying we're trying to pay off trying to pay off our our houses. Yeah, and 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 you know live like no one else. And yeah, uh, how, how old are you guys? Thirty nine. You ever oh, been to you ever goodness. been to Hawaii? I have on a company trip, so I never paid for it. Has she been? Yes, she has. Okay. She has. She says she has no desire, but we we haven't been to Kauai yet. We've been to the Big Island yeah. and not Kauai. Okay, <laughs> but are, are you not just going to fly over for the wedding and then bolt as soon as the reception's over? Oh. Correct. Oh no, no, that's no. A, yeah, that's a. That's a 12-hour flight. We're going to go for a week. Okay. Uh, there you go. There My you point go. is, that's the narrative. The yeah. You guys got to talk about this as an awesome opportunity to get away and reward each other for this sacrifice. You make discipline. really good money. Yeah. You're out of debt except your home. You're executing a financial plan, four, five, six. Um, you should go. Yeah. Thank you. You should do this. You should do <laughs> well, this. Well, guess what? She said if you said yes, then we get to go. Okay. There well, it is. I, I'm, not, I, I'm not making the decision, but I'm just saying no, arith- I'm just- the arithmetic is that you, you are not being irresponsible. Okay. And when you said we're just cheap and you laughed, you were sort of kidding, but not really. And so right. the thing you guys want to be careful of, it, it, there are three things you can do with money. You can invest it, you can be generous with it, and you can enjoy it. Almost everyone is weak in one of them. And yeah. so watch the one that you're weak in and you're the one you guys are weak in is you're not you're not good at enjoying your money. Right. And you need to you need Yeah, to, I mean we have a we have a million dollars yeah. in our nest egg. So. Yeah. So you need to so you're really good at investing. How's your generosity? Yeah. Probably medium. Mm, minimal. Yeah, see. I, the truth is there's usually a correlation between uh, the, the people who enjoy their money and the generosity. So one of the things we do at our house, and this might help you, is um, okay. you kind of feel like you're doing something wrong if you're doing something opulent like a week long in Hawaii. That's a big time expenditure, right? So one of the things yeah. we do is sometimes we'll just increase our generosity by the same amount we spend on ourselves. Okay. And, and we just like, uh, okay, God, how, who can we, who do you want to help today? Uh, I want to give $7,000 to, uh, I want to buy two single moms, a $3,000 car this week. Show me, lead them to me, Lord. Mm. And and then I'll go do that. And, and then I'll go to Hawaii and I don't think about it. Yeah. Gotcha. Sometimes the generosity muscle works almost simultaneously with the enjoyment muscle. Take some extra cash to Hawaii and bless somebody out of their mind who's serving take, you. Take 70000 and buy you a truck while you're there. No. <laughs> yeah, call Beverly and pick her up on the way. <laughs> Drop a truck off at Boise on yeah. your way. <laughs> uh, this is The Ramsey Show.
Steve here. We just launched a brand new listener survey. We want to know what you think about the show. You'll be entered to win a $100 Amazon gift card. No purchase necessary. Take the survey at RamseySolutions.com slash survey or text survey to 33789. intentional about your character you can have money and a career you are the hero in your story live from the headquarters of ramsey solutions broadcasting from the dollar car rental studios it's the ramsey show where dad is dumb cash is king and the paid off home mortgage has taken the place of the bmw as the status symbol of choice. I'm Dave Ramsey, your host. This is your show, America. Thank you for joining us. Open phones at 888-825-5225. That's 888-825-5225. Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today, here to talk to you about your careers, your jobs, doing work that you love, the clear path to doing work you love. From his new book, From Paycheck to purpose available on pre-sale right now at ramseysolutions.com herbert is going to be up first this hour he's in guatemala hi herbert how are you hi david how are you better than i deserve how can i help Uh, here's listen here's the thing i'm 30 years old i'm from guatemala Mm -hmm. i just got engaged with a beautiful lady she's 28 congratulations Thank you, thank you. We're both the three engineers. I'm a sales manager, and she's a finance manager. Uh, right now, I have around 200 grand in savings, and she has around 50k. So each year, we make around 160. It's 80 each. Okay. So um, we will marry next year, and we we're wondering if we should rent for maybe four or five years and invest that the money we make in that time to pay cash for our house. What will a house cost? Maybe around 400 grand, 500 grand. Mm-hmm. You can't buy one for 250? Yes, we can. The thing is that we, we were thinking about buying like a house that will we will be there uh, Forever, and you, I no, know what I mean. There's very few people stay in a house forever. Okay. The forever house thing. Now, are you talking about in Guatemala or talking about in the states? Yeah, in Guatemala. Okay, I do not know anything at all about Guatemala real estate. Not a thing. Okay. Okay. Can't. So I. I Most people I, here stay at their home like for life. Yeah. Okay. Is the average home in America in the U.S. sells every 5.6 years. Okay. So uh, this, when people in America say it's their forever home, I laugh at them because it's, <laughs> cause it's not okay. true, okay? Now, it might, be, it might be more culturally true there, okay? The second mm-hmm. thing I don't know is I don't know. If you bought a $250,000 home now and paid cash for it, meanwhile, you have no rent because you have a paid-for home, you could save that much more. You'd be able to save more because you don't have any rent cost. Could how hard would it be to sell the two hundred fifty thousand dollar home when you saved up another two hundred thousand to move up to the half million dollar house? Is the market okay. is the market viable? Can you sell something fairly easily? Yeah, yeah, you can do that. Okay, so if you moved in a house for 250000 and lived there three years, and during that time you saved up another 300000 and then you sold that house for 300000 you'd have 600000 right? Yeah. Meanwhile, you had no rent. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Now that, that works if the real estate market is viable enough that you feel sure you can sell this starter house when you want to move up. But if it's very, very difficult to sell a house, then maybe this suggestion is not a good idea. Okay. And sh- should we invest that money during that time? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. 
um, into something. And again, you've got to choose a vehicle that fits your situation. Um, and I and I'm not an expert on what's available to you for all of that. So, you know that that that's the the thing. I, um, I'm I'm nervous. You can tell I'm stammering around with my verbiage because I just don't know that your your cultural norms number one uh, well enough. I mean I have a vague understanding, but well enough, and I certainly don't know the real estate market well enough to where I can say this is what you ought to do. Uh, so you've kind of got to use some judgment with the knowledge you have of uh, the world you live in, which is different uh, in some respects. And so you got to make those calls. Interesting discussion, though. It is. I would just caution, you know, just because everybody else does it or a majority of people buy one house and stay in that house in Guatemala doesn't mean that you have to do that. I mean, it could certainly be a cultural norm. But what do you two want as a young couple? And i got to tell you, I don't care if you're from Guatemala uh, or the United States or anywhere else in the world. A young couple, uh, life is so very different in those first couple of years. And as you begin to move through the phases of life, whatever that's going to look like for you guys, things are going to change dramatically. So having this mindset that we've got to come out of the gate and buy our forever house, I I just think it in some ways can lock your dreams and lock your future up a little bit. So I I would just caution that just because everybody else does it doesn't mean it's the right thing for you. Yeah. Hey, good call. Thank you for joining us. Mary's with us. Mary's in San Jose, California. Hi, Mary. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave. Um, So my situation is I'm 58 years old. I lost my job last year, so I decided to take early retirement. I'm living off uh, passive income of my rental. I have no consumer debt, but I still have a mortgage payment. I refi last year, so I got the 1.99%. So about a month ago, I, um, I found out about your principal, and so now I'm so fired up to pay off my, uh, my mortgage. Cool. So, yes, and so shall I start collecting my pension? See, the thing is, the reason why I postponed it was if I collect now, I will get only 4600 a month. If I wait until I'm 62, it's going to be 5500 a month. And if I wait until 65, it's going to be $6,000 a month. So what do I do? Do you have a lump sum option? No, unfortunately not. Okay. All right. Um, well, obviously the pension dies with you, right? I'm sorry. Yes, of course. And so, um, the money you collect between now and the time that it would go up, if we Mm -hmm. ran the math figures on just for the fun of it, it's not what we're going to do, but you said, you said it goes up at 62 to 5,500. That's 60 in two years. It's going to be 55. Yeah. Okay. All right, but you have two years. No, of co- actually, it's four because I'm 58 now. So at 62, it will go up to 5,500. Okay, so four ti- four times five. Yeah, four times 12 is 48 months of collecting 4,500 dollars. That pile of money invested would likely make you more than the other thousand that they're going to give you for waiting. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense to you? Yes, I'm taking it. it, I'm not going to do that with it. I'm going to take it now and pay off your house. But that that tells you that you probably ought to take as quick as you can take it. And um, because the more you get, the more years you're getting money. I understand the monthly changes on it. And the other thing is, you're probably going to do some kind of encore career. You're probably not done at 58. You probably got some other stuff you're supposed to do yet. You don't have to, but it'd be cool if you went and made another 80 grand a year just doing something you love. Absolutely. This is The Ramsey Show. We were drawn to Christian Healthcare Ministries because we both had young families and we wanted to have more children. And we had also just started a real estate company and needed to find healthcare coverage that would meet our needs. We were attracted to CHM because of its low monthly costs and the ability to negotiate medical costs down. Established in 1981 and accredited by the Better Business Bureau, CHM is here to meet the needs of your growing family or small business. Check us out at chministries.org backslash budget. We absolutely believe in it.
Ken Coleman, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today here on the air. Open phones at 888-825-5225. How many of you guys are stressed out or you're hurting because your retirement savings got you scared? Maybe you were super close to retiring and um, now you're wondering if you should work longer. Well, you need a someone in your corner that will walk you through the process of emotionally surviving the ups and downs of the investing world. And that way you don't jump in and jump out at exactly the wrong times, which is what most people do. So you need the, the data tells us that the people that have a, uh, an investing professional in their corner with the heart of a teacher uh, actually end up making more money through the scope of their life, mainly because they stay invested. It's that simple. So you can restore your confidence. Go to RamseySolutions.com slash SmartVestor. Check in with one of our SmartVestor pros. Have them get in your corner and help you out. Our question today comes from Blinds.com. They have a 100% satisfaction guarantee. That means even if you mismeasure or you pick the wrong color, they'll remake your blinds for free. Free samples, free shipping. And with the new promos they run every month, you'll save even more. Use the promo code Ramsey to get the best possible deal. Today's question comes from Rhonda in Florida. My husband has served in children's ministry leadership for over 30 years. Our church recently went through some financial difficulties, and the pastor asked if any staff would be willing to step down. My husband decided to opt out and was given one month severance. Prior to working at the church, he had started working on his associate's degree and now has gone back to get his AA in business administration. At age 57, is it worth finishing up this AA? Is there a field for someone with 24 years of experiencing, experience rather in managing a large ministry? Let's take that first, excuse me, the second question first. Uh, there's absolutely a field for someone with 24 years of experience in managing a large ministry because that is a leadership position. And there's always a need for leadership ship in uh, the workforce, certainly in corporate America. And so what has to happen is it's less about the ministry uh, specifications, but more about the leadership experience. As far as the first question, uh, if the if the AA in business administration helps add a little bit of juice to his resume and gets him a little bit more on the resume uh, besides the ministry experience, and you can afford it, and it's not uh, in any way uh, causing you guys to struggle financially, yes, I'd go ahead and finish it. And uh, the reality is, is that this is where relationships come into play, Dave. Uh, you know, you've got somebody who's been in one industry for so long, 24 years, and then you're looking to switch gears into another industry. The transferable experience is what it's all about, but it is more about the relationships you have that will open up doors. Think of all the people that your husband knows through those years of ministry and living in this community. Uh, right now, this is the hottest hiring market we've ever seen, even hotter than pre-COVID uh, of February of 2020. 10.4 million jobs, the latest job report, um, and companies need good experience and good leadership. And at 57, though, you will face, this is just the reality, you will face some people kind of looking at his resume or looking at him going, oh, he's 57. And so this is where relationships come in. People that you know that know other people and those doors get opened that way to where you're, you're coming in already ahead of the competition because of the credibility of the relationship to say, I know this guy, great leader, a lot of experience, got the talent to be able to come in and help us. That's how you win this game. My mind as a salesman always goes to how does he sell himself? Yes. Uh, what's the narrative mm -hmm. and um, th that he brings to the company that yep. he's interviewing with? <clears throat> And uh, so, and the product is him. Yes. And he has to sell that product. Yep. It's yep. a little uncomfortable, a little awkward to sell <laughs> yourself. Right. But yep. here's the thing. If for 30 years you can survive the parents mm. while you run a children's ministry, you have people skills. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. And think about how many volunteers. You know how to herd cats. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Unbelievable. Yeah. And church leaders almost always, even in the large churches with large staffs, almost always rely on volunteer help. And if I'm a, if I'm a hiring manager or a leader looking to hire another leader, I would lead with, hey, I've effectively led volunteers, people who don't have to show up. Yeah. I get people who, to care, I get people who work because they care. Yes. Not 
because they're being paid. Yes. Yep. And um, and I've managed all of these relationships around all these kids, parents uh, helicoptering in and everything else for the, all these years. And I think you build a narrative around that. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, uh, otherwise, if you don't if you don't position yourself in someone's mind, they may say, "Oh, you've been a babysitter." Yes, yeah, you've been a babysitter for thirty years. Yeah, and that's not what this guy did. That's exactly right. That's a great point. If you don't position yourself well, guess what? They, they will position. They're going to position you somewhere. Yeah, in their head. Yeah, they're going to pigeonhole you because we we try to go. Okay, what's that mean? What's this guy do? What's it? How does that fit what I need? How can he do that? And that's if you right. don't go, listen. I know how to lead volunteers. I know how to deal with difficult relationships, highly emotional situations. Yeah. I mean, this guy could run a customer care center. Easy. Where there's complaints coming in. That's exactly right. Because that's what he's been doing. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and to your point, if you're applying for leadership positions, look at the job description and then fit your experience into that and go, hey, you're looking for this. This is how I did this, this, and this. Yeah. I can add value for you guys. Yeah. And I, I did it before. Yeah. In a, in a different setting, mm-hmm. but a very similar transactional process. Julie is with us. Julie is in Tampa, Florida. Hi, Julie. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, guys. How are you doing? Better than we deserve. What's up? Awesome. Uh, so, so yeah, my name is Julie. Uh, I am 24 years old, married. My husband and I both work full-time. Uh, he's also a full-time paramedic student. Um, so my question is, I am I'm at risk of losing my job by Thanksgiving. They are requiring a COVID vaccine for in-person work by then. And my husband and I have kind of just opted out of getting that. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm on baby step number two. I have uh, two more credit card stuff to pay off. But my concern is if I'm out of work by Thanksgiving, will I want to put a hold off on paying off debt and save every penny I get? Or do I want to pay off more debt but have less really wiggle room if I were to lose my job? You need to put your total money makeover on hold. Yeah. And you know, need to go get a new job today. Yeah, start looking right yeah. now. Don't even wait for that shoe to drop. It's coming. Okay. It's yeah. coming. Yeah. And, you may, and you've already made your decision. And so mm-hmm. you just need to act today. Don't wait. The, the thing that can happen is, is that we live in, uh, we think that, uh, that the Calvary is coming and someone's going to solve this for us. And mm-hmm. they're not. They're not coming. Yeah. You know, you really do know what's going to happen, so don't walk around acting like it's not going to happen. Yeah. And so it's yeah. time it's time for you to go on and you need to go on today. Yeah. You don't need to wait till Thanksgiving. Yeah. And by the way, Julie, th- this is a great job market right now. Yeah, so, it's perfect timing. I, I mean, you're going to get an upgrade. What yeah. do you make now? Uh, so what's funny is I've been working at this company for 2 years, but this month I got promoted into a new role and I I make about 47 now with my raise. Cool. What, do you, what, what do you- kind of work? Um, I was an executive assistant, and now I kind of work um, as a low-level consultant, I would say. Within the organization? Correct, yes. Okay. We, uh, specializing in what? Operations? Marketing? What? Um, administration. Yeah. Yeah. Well, look, uh, you know how many companies... So you were, such a good, you were such a good administrative assistant that you're teaching the rest of them now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is that what it amounts to? Yeah, yeah, I would say so. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so you probably can land a, a position at making 60 as a high-end administrative assistant if you want to do that again. Yeah. Cuz you've not only been a, my... you've not only been a world-class assistant, you've also taught them. Mhm. My fear is that a lot of companies are going to be moving towards this new, um, like, in-person hybrid model, which is totally fine. But having the mandated vaccine nope. within that is nope. what scares me. There's some that are the big ones, and some, and, but most of us aren't. And do your homework on the front end. You can ask around town. You don't just have to. Because this, just because you're, you've had this experience at one place does not mean it's yes. going to be the norm. <laughs> That's just not happening. It's only the big companies that are optics concerned that are the, the huge mega companies that are doing this stupid yeah. butt stuff. And the rest of them are going, no, people are grown ups, they get to make their own decisions. This is The Ramsey Show.
Bobby of Ramsey Solutions. On the debt free stage, Tony and Ruth Ann are with us. Hey guys, how are you? We're doing great. How are doing you, good. Dave? Welcome, welcome. Good to have you. Where do you guys live? Uh, in Delafield, Wisconsin, just west of Milwaukee. Milwaukee area. Welcome to Nashville. Thank you. And all the way down here to do a debt free scream. We are. How much have you paid off? $346,000. Wow. How long did that take? 34 months. Wow. You kicked it. That's amazing. And your range of income during that time? Uh, we started out right around 180 and we ended about 250 Wow. Nice job. What do you guys do for a living? I'm a uh, sourcing manager mm -hmm. for and a large tool company. Mm -hmm. And I'm a swim coach and health coach. Okay. Wow. Good stuff. What kind of debt was the 346000 it was our mortgage. Yay! Hey, house and everything. Yes. Yep. Looking at weird people. Yep. <laughs> Way to go, guys. You have a paid for house. We do. That is so cool. What's this house worth? About 600 k <laughs> That's so fun. Yeah. So what made you decide to pay it off 34 months ago? Well, back in 2005, we moved back to Wisconsin. I retired from the military and... Uh, we bought the house, and in 2014, my daughter and I, my wife talked my daughter and I into going to FPU with our church. Mm -hmm. So we went, and we didn't have a lot of debt at the time, so getting through the first couple baby steps was easy. Mm -hmm. um, then we built up our emergency fund, and then in 2018, uh, we refinanced our house to a 15-year yeah. following your plan, mm -hmm. and we said, all right, no more, enough's enough. We want to be completely debt-free, so we went after it. Every extra dime we got, we wow. uh, put toward the house. So the whole Financial Peace University thing tripped you up and made you do it. Yes, yep. exactly. <laughs> Eventually. <laughs> yeah. Well, you went right down the baby steps, it sounds yep, like. Absolutely. <laughs> well done. Yeah, I got to ask, when we see this kind of a jump in income, what, what, what allowed for the 70000 bump? Well, uh, mainly it was me taking a new job and also uh, bonuses thrown in there as well. Nice. So you, get, so you got a new job. Did, yeah. you, did you look for that? Did they come after you? I mean, what was the intentionality there? Uh, it was a little of both. Nice. Uh, it was great timing. Good yeah. for you, man. Yeah. Dave, that's the bigger shovel. That's one way to that's, get a bigger shovel is to out, get promoted. Man. Ding, ding. Nice. 34 months later, the house is done. Wow. Right. It is. Very cool. Thank you for your service, by the way. Yes, sir. Oh, you're right. welcome. And uh, so... Uh, uh, wow. What do you tell people the key to getting out of debt is? You guys did it. Um, I'm going to take this one. I'm the free spirit. <laughs> He's the nerd. But it was his spreadsheets. Mm -hmm. And it was working as a team because there were some times when we had to say no and our friends just thought we were nuts because mm -hmm. interest rates are really low on, on mortgages. And mm -hmm. uh, um, we were really intentional. Mm -hmm. uh, every extra dime went to the mortgage. We didn't even think about using it for anything else. So we have a lot of household uh, updates that we need to do that we have put off. And uh, Now you're ready. We're ready, yeah, yeah, and we can pay cash. Make you a little list of them and start plowing through them, huh? Yes, yeah. Yeah. and you know what? You're never too old and it's not too late because I, I know we're a little bit older for this uh, debt-free scream. And uh, How old are you? Late 50s. Okay. So... Um, you know, we hear a lot of stories of younger people that are amazing, but mm -hmm. uh, it's never too late to start this, and the grass does feel much better <laughs> under your feet when that house is paid off. Yeah, so you were like 55 years old when it started, or 54 yep. years old when yep. you started this. Yeah. yeah, and now we have lots of options, and I would have to say that discipline is freedom. And a lot of people Ooh. don't look at it that way. Ooh. Yeah. That's a line that's right good. there. Yeah. That's a line from the health coach. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yes. yeah. Good. It is freedom. You're right. That's very good. How's it feel? Very liberating. Yes. It feels awesome to know that we're in charge of our future, financial and otherwise. I mean, um, it's we're very excited to be in the position that we're in. We became yeah. Everyday Millionaires uh, about two years ago during this process, so mm -hmm. that helps, and, you know. So you've got uh, how much in your nest egg right now in your, in your retirement? Uh, we're at about 1.6. 1. 1. And then the house is worth 6. Correct, yeah. yeah. So about 2.2 .2 anyway. Total? About 1.6 no. total. Oh, total. So about, total. A, about a million in the, in the retirement total. accounts. Right, yeah. exactly. Okay. All yep. right. Wow, look at you. <laughs> <laughs> and how much of this did you inherit? Zero. Zero. Nothing. Precisely nothing. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 
And um, you're probably like me. You, you want to be nice, but when people say stuff like "you're so lucky," you want to strangle them. Big right. time. <laughs> Luck had nothing to do with it. It didn't. Yeah. It didn't. Um, but you know what? Luck seems to follow people that work the plan. Yeah. I do have to say that. Yeah. You know. Um, so. Well, I mean, and discipline is freedom. Yes, yeah, it is. L- luck is uh, luck follows people who um, have some discipline and yep. do hard work and all those kinds of things. Yeah, so, yeah. The harder I work, the luckier I get. Yes. I've heard, you know, that kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah. You know, I got I got to address that because it drives me nuts. There's no <laughs> luck at all. Yeah. Uh, I, I got to tell you, you all put yourself in the right positions. The discipline puts yourself in positions to where good things come to you. Right. Yeah. You know, th- there's something. You know, we've heard the phrase, "Good things come to those who wait." Waiting is a form of discipline. That's what you guys did so i mean i just you guys are amazing and yeah. you're the health coach i mean you yeah. Get that. Yeah. yeah and, and I, I i tell that to my clients also yeah you know and what gets what gets measured gets managed and yep. so i think it's really important he is mr excel spreadsheet mm-hmm. he can tell you how much we're going to have in the bank 2028 because yep. it's um <laughs> but it's really important to measure yep <laughs> And check where things are going. Yeah, so nothing, nothing moves unless it's measured. Yeah, yep. that's exactly right. I agree. Yeah. Well done, you guys. Woo! Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. So great. So fun. So fun. What do you tell people the key to getting out of debt is? Well, having a plan and sticking to it. Okay. And, and we did it together. Yep. I mean, we had uh, we had our moments. We had our you know discussions on things. We'd get a <laughs> bonus, and it's like, okay. <laughs> Can uh, we please yeah. just get one little thing? But we didn't. We did. Yeah. We just. Yeah. And we, went, we took vacations and things like that. So it wasn't yeah. like we didn't uh, have some fun along the way. Yeah. We were like. You're, so what's the first big project on the house you're going to do now? The floors. The floors. Yeah. You know what? My husband didn't want me to share this, but I'm going to. We got duct tape holding down some carpet in our house. Yeah. And we are getting And you're worth $1.6 million <laughs> yeah. Yeah, with yeah. duct tape on your carpet. Yep. Yeah, you we, might be a redneck if. Yeah. If, if you got duct tape holding your carpet down. Wow. <laughs> yes. I so. love it. Yeah. So a new hardwoods or what? We're just re- going to have them refinished. Oh, yeah. okay. And they right. get new carpet. Yeah, that yes. carpet, yes. that duct tape carpet's got to go. I'm <laughs> yes. just saying, yeah. Don't even know what it is, but it's got to go. Yeah. And you can just write a check and won't even feel it. Yes. Right. No house payment at all. Yep. Congratulations. So Thanks. proud of you guys. You're great. You're heroes. Thank well, you. well done. Very well done. We got a copy of the legacy journey for you. That's the next chapter in your story. You've completely changed your legacy. And uh, change the whole process here. Very well done. And a copy of the Total Money Makeover for you to give away to somebody else and pay it forward and keep these keep these ideas moving and keep creating more and more of these baby step millionaires like you guys. I'm so proud of you. Well done. Well done. All right. Here we go. Tony and Ruth Ann in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. $346,000 paid off in 34 months. House and everything. Making 180 to 250. Count it down. Let's hear a debt free scream three two one we're debt free (laughs) i love it Woo! different different yeah that is amazing wow yeah these baby step millionaires are coming out of the woodwork nowadays oh yeah Um, you know, but Dave Ramsey's only for the poor people. He can't really help you if you want to build, become wealthy. Mm. You know, you've heard that, right? So, oh, uh, sure. yeah, it's, it's hilarious. But, yeah, there's millionaires everywhere. By the way, what's interesting about that kind of critique uh, that I'd like to just take on right now and smash it, Dave Ramsey didn't do anything in the story. Or the story in the second hour, or the third hour, or every hour of every Ramsey show. We, as a company, showed people a clear path, but these people did the work. Yeah. The whole interview has nothing to do with you. you. I didn't give and them so any people money. people that attack you. I did not give them any money. Yeah, there's no scamming. People yeah. are actually doing the work. And you hear these stories, you get fired up because they, they came together. Two different personalities came together for a shared goal. And that's, the, that's just, that's what it's about. Their dreams, their future, their peace, their freedom. That's how it works. You're listening to The Ramsey Show.
Our scripture of the day, Proverbs 16, 3, commit to the Lord whatever you do and he will establish your plans. John Maxwell said the reality is that you will never get much done unless you go ahead and do it before you're ready. That's the truth. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. April is with us. April is in State College, Pennsylvania. Hi, April. What's up? Hi, Dave. Thanks so much for taking my call. Sure. How can I help? So my question is, I completed Baby Step 7 back in 2018. I just turned 34 years old. And today I have a net worth of about $1.7 million. Way to go! Thank you. But my question is, the one baby step I've always skipped is about saving for kids' college because I don't have any children at this point. Well, but you should now, skip it. Well, now I'm kind of at the point where I know I want kids within the next five years or so. And should I open a 529 account in my name and then transfer it down the road like once I have children? Would, there be any, would that be useful or not? Eh, probably wouldn't fool with it, honestly. You're, you're in great shape. You don't have to do that. But if you want to, there's nothing wrong with what you're doing. Technically, it'll work uh, because 529s are transferable to family members, and you would have tax-free growth on that money. You know, it's basically a Roth for education, right? Mm -hmm. And so that in that sense, it's it's an interesting strategy. Um, the downside is, is if for some reason you did not end up having children, you have this money trapped in an education fund. <laughs> And you really, you're going to have to transfer it to somebody else in the family, you know, to be able to use it without the penalties. So you're not going to get the tax-free growth in that case, obviously. So uh, I probably, I'm trying to think, it's not a bad strategy. I just, uh, there's something about saving for a kid that's not here yet. I probably wouldn't do it. Okay. Yeah, I was just thinking because I know I either want kids either biological or for some reason I couldn't then buy yeah. adoption. So yeah. I think I mean, I, I don't doubt that you're going to have children one, one way or the other. I, I don't have any doubt of that whatsoever. But um, I, I, I think that there's a, um, the little bit of gain, the, the money is trapped for one purpose, and the little bit of gain you would have for doing that this early is probably not worth trapping it. I, I you know, and, the, and so if it was sharing to me, we probably wouldn't do it. You got $1.7 million, your kid's going to college. Don't worry about it. Yeah. You know? And you're responsible and, and killing it. That yeah. got you to this point in the first place. Yeah. So you got you got plenty of time. Um, it's a, it's a, 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 yeah, I, I probably wouldn't give up the freedom on the money for the little bit of gain that you're going to get from it. Jesse is in Charlotte, North Carolina. Hi, Jesse. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, Dave. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. Um, I have a, uh, a couple of properties. One's a rental property and then my personal property. And the rental property is um, is essentially paid off or it will be shortly. It's about 10000 left on it. And our personal property has 174000 left on it. And so my question for you is, there's kind of one of three three routes that I'm thinking. Um, one is sell the rental property and then just pay off our property and keep whatever extra cash after we sell it. Um, the other is just to keep it since we don't, you know, we don't really have a mortgage after the next couple of months on it and, and keep that cash flow. It rents for about 1500 a month and then just essentially debt snowball our, our personal property. Uh, and then the other option I was thinking of is a potential refi just to pay off my personal and then keep the, the rental in the LLC and just treat it as a separate business. So that's where my, my question is for you. What route would you recommend? What's your household income? Uh, about 100000 Okay. Not so if you just leave things like they are, you're on, you don't have any other debt other than this, right? Correct. And if you're putting 15% of your income aside for retirement, how quickly do you pay off 174000 making making hundred grand? Um, I think we could pay it off in the next few years. Four to five years. Okay. That's what I would do, and I'd just keep the rental. Mm -hmm. If it was going to be 15 right. years for you to be able to get out of this because everything was so tight, you know, I'd probably dump the rental and get your house paid off. But I think you can pay it off in four to five years, and that's if you don't get any raises. Right, right, right. Okay. Yeah, you're, pl you're pouring so all of your, the, you know, your spare cash from the rental income and from your household income 
beyond 15% of your income going into retirement, all the spare cash you can find without choking your family down to nothing. And we're just going to start paying mm-hmm. off that house and you're going to have it paid for in five years. Okay. That's 30 okay. grand a year, 40 grand a year. Yeah. I mean, I, it's definitely doable. The The market right now is, is very, I guess, hot, so to speak. That's what I was curious. Is it like a good time to sell and just keep what you can or just hold on to it? Well, the only reason I would sell is if I thought it was going to go down. Okay. It's not going to go down. It's just, just really, really shot up quickly. And so all the real estate that I had on my balance sheet a year ago is now worth a lot more. I kind of like that. Mm-hmm. I'm not selling nothing. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to incre- just smile about all these increases in value that I've got. So and, true. And by the way, the rents are going up too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So your income's going up there as well. Jesse, what you're hearing from Dave okay. is the long view versus right now. And right, and this is a temptation for people, Dave. It's like, oh, I can cash out now. But you look at the long term, run those numbers out as the value increases, the rent over all those years versus your one-time sum. Yeah. I mean, the, the value is going to continue to increase. It's probably not going to increase at the same rate it has in the last couple of years. It's been unbelievable. Correct. Last couple of years. But um you know, it's a, it's a good play to hold them. Yeah. If you can, and I think you're in a position you can. Sam is with us. Sam's in Bismarck, North Dakota. Hi, Sam. How are you? Hey, Dave. Uh, thanks for taking my call. Sure. What's up? Hey, um, yeah, I had a question. I'm debating on going back to school to become a crop duster, and I'm up here in North Dakota working, uh, saving money to be able to do that, and I was just uh, wondering if it's the right uh, step to take to do that. Or Fine. What's a not. crop duster make? What kind of money do you make? Well, uh, the first couple years, not very much, I think, which it's a, it's a seasonal thing during yeah. the summer, so you, I think... 20 to 30 grand your first couple seasons and then after you get uh acclimated to it better then you know you make up to a hundred thousand dollars in six months what's it going to cost for you to get trained well i checked out a school down in georgia and it was 50 grand and it takes four three to four months yeah I would keep researching. I I would keep searching and researching and looking for anybody uh, and everybody who's reputable and see if we can get that cost shaved off and see if we can get a better deal. Uh, And then the question is, is how bad do you want to do this? If if there wasn't any money to pay for it, would you be jumping on this right away? How excited are you to be a crop duster? (laughs) Well, um, I thought about it for a few years and uh, I went down there and take the school out and rode in one and man after we took off got up in the air and dove down in the field i you know thought i was on cloud nine i was uh all about it so there you go so keep on saving brother think, keep on saving okay don't you quit all right hey look it, you, yeah. you're gonna have to save for it and i love that you said save because it's gonna take a little longer but here's the deal that feeling is gonna happen to you over and over and over again and you just keep your mindset on how that felt that time you got up there how much money you're eventually going to make and that will allow you to keep the persistence so you, you have to get a pilot's license right yeah he's got to get trained for that you have to not only get a pilot's yeah, license you- but you also have to learn how to actually do this type of maneuver correct well, you got to get your private pilot and then your commercial pilot. And then after that, there's an ag program, which is the school. They do all of that, but there's specifically an ag program that shows you, you know, your turns and how to dive in the field and all that. That's, That's like, amazing. I've never heard of that. That's so cool. Yeah. I, you have to learn how to do everything somewhere. Yes, so it's interesting. Wow. The answer is yes. Go to it. Yeah. You're close. Pay cash for it. Yep. And shop around. Make sure there's more. There's got to be more than one place teaching it. Make sure you're not overpaying. And you got sucked into somebody else's dream. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth. Uh, Ken Coleman, good hour. Good Thanks. job. James Childs and Kelly in the booth. I'm Dave Ramsey, your host. We'll be back with you before you know it. In the meantime, remember, there's ultimately only one way to financial peace, and that's to walk daily with the Prince of Peace, Christ Jesus. 
Dave here. We just launched a brand new listener survey. We want to know what you think about the show. You'll be entered to win a $100 Amazon gift card. No purchase necessary. Take the survey at RamseySolutions.com slash survey or text survey to 33789.